New braids. I really like the way they look. Uh, how they feel, that's another story. So before we get started, I'm warning you right now, this is gonna be a really long intro because this movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. When I first saw this movie, I was maybe nine years old and I was watching the original American version that had all the uh, spicy scenes cut out. Even then, should not have been watching it at age nine. Regardless, I fell in love with it and to this day, it is only second to Enter the Dragon and maybe Fifth Element, depending on how I'm feeling. This movie is incredible and I figured since we are on the trend of of martial arts movies that this is where I'd start because I feel like a lot of people assume that this is just a martial arts movie but the argument could be made that it's actually a romantic drama with fight scenes. I am of both ways of thinking. One thing can be two things at the same time. Now for those of you who know and for those of you who don't my name is TK your resident lunatic and today as I've said we are watching my favorite movie of all time Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon. I have been wanting to do this movie for a really long time and I'm still kind of bobbing and weaving with fair use, but the fact of the matter is, is I didn't just want you guys to know how I feel about this movie. This movie is also kind of my litmus test as to how I can tell the people that I'm with engage with the media that they watch. And I hate saying the media they consume, but it's really the only way people can say it these days, but that's besides the point. I'm getting off topic, but discussing it can always be kind of a gauntlet because there are a lot of people who think that this movie is just a martial arts film, which is fine. But in my opinion, that's just a surface level interpretation because I truly believe in my heart of hearts because its director Ang Lee excels in making these tragic characters and tragic stories from Brokeback Mountain hell even to his interpretation of the Hulk that this movie is a tragedy. A lot of Wuja movies are but more than that it is also a very feminine movie. Not a female action flick, not a girl power film, we're not gaslighting and gatekeeping. No, this is a feminine tragedy. Apparently saying that Lee Mu Bai as cool as he is, because he is cool, is not the main character of this movie is a controversial take, and that saddens me deeply. Li Mu Bai is not the main character of this movie. Now, you could say that Michelle Yeoh's character Shu Lin is the main character, and that Jen is the antagonist. That's kind of how I see it, but a lot of people see it that Shu Lin is the antagonist, uh, holding the upright moralistic martial code. What I'm trying to say is that Shu Lin and Jen are the main characters of this movie, not Li Mu Bai. This movie has incredibly complex characters in a sense that no one is wholly good or wholly bad. The worst people can still love very deeply, but the best, most upright people fail to take responsibility or they support people who do horrible things or look the other way when terrible things happen. Everyone has a reason for the things they do. And the fact that not everything is clear cut is one of the reasons this movie is such a shining gem of of martial arts cinema. And in Wuja media, from Nirvana and Fire to Word of Honor, from True Legend to Swordmaster, the greatest crime you can commit is not murder, it's not theft, it's selfishness. It is indulging in selfish desire. Even more so than in Jianjia and Imperial novels, in Wuja, it's vital that the main character is able to essentially hold it down and make some very hard decisions because the point of the martial world is that everyone is in the pursuit of power. Their goal is to be strong and to beat as many people as possible. And if you are not a strong, capable, responsible leader, you're going to die. These people are going to eat you alive. And one of the things that makes you a weak leader, according to these stories, is indulging in selfish desire, specifically sexual or uh, monetary desire. If you willfully abuse people, money, history, or, you know, lie a bunch of times, you're essentially a weak leader. And that's the reason that Shu Lin is the Crouching Tiger and Jen is the Hidden Dragon. Crouching Tiger is always ready, always ready to act, always on the hunt, patient, always ready to make hard decisions. Shu Lin's entire existence, entire existence in the story is making the hard decision to not marry Li Mu Bai, to not indulge in that selfish desire. However, she is constantly undermined by the hidden dragon, Jen, who they say repeatedly in this movie that she's poisonous, she's toxic. The dragon is a fiercely independent soul. And throughout this movie, you'll be able to tell that Jen is not only independent, but she is selfish because a 
of how she has been sheltered. She kind of lives in this fantasy world where she always gets her way and as long as she keeps trying, and I've said this before, that I hate this quality in characters who truly believe that if they keep trying, everything will work out all right in the end, no matter all the collateral damage that happens in the process. And Jen leaves an incredible amount of collateral damage in her wake. And as far as I know, she's one of a small amount of characters that it actually blows up in their face. I could rant about this movie all day, but if you guys have no context, then it's useless. So this reaction is going to be a little bit different. I might actually pause throughout the movie to explain certain concepts. And moreover, all of my annotations also might be a little bit different if fair use decides to, you know, they're not kind. Let's go ahead and put on our headphones and get on with the drama. There's a lot of drama, but there's also a lot of fights. Full disclosure, it is like my second time recording this reaction because something went screwy with the first video. For lack of a better word, my DVD of this movie is very badly damaged, so I had to get another version. This version should be in Mandarin. One of the things about this movie, before we start, it is so beautiful. It won the Academy Award for uh, Best Cinematography, and I believe Best Foreign Language Film, but it has one of the most memorable scores I have had Eternal Vow on every single phone and MP3 player I have ever owned because it's just that beautiful. I, I will be watching this movie, reacting to this movie as someone who has seen it several times. Uh, I might say some spoilers here and there, but I'm gonna be honest with you, this isn't exactly a movie you can spoil because if you're paying attention, all the characters know all the twists already. Like, that's the dramatic irony of the whole thing. And this is one thing I do love about Shulin's character is that her security escort business is clearly very famous. Like, you don't have to see her be a leader because it's already informed. It's a foregone conclusion. In a very gentle way, he is telling her that he missed her so much that he would rather have her than Nirvana. Girl, you! He came back for you! I want a replica of this sword so fucking bad. Like, right up there with the Master Sword. This is absolutely a sword that I want a replica of. Well, that's the thing about the martial world. You can't exactly retire. You either end up too injured to fight, or you die. I'd like that. Oh, he loves her so much. The the longing, the yearning. Wu Jia invented it. God, one thing about this movie is it is beautiful. And look at Michelle Yeoh. Like she she ages like a fine wine, but she has always been just so incredibly beautiful. <laughs> See, that's the thing about Xu Lin, is that you don't have to see her being a good leader. You don't have to see her being a good businesswoman. All of these very important people automatically defer to her. In some cases, tell, don't show is better because it's not really about her escort business. It's not really about her defending a caravan from robbers. This is about her and her situation with Li Mu Bai and Jen. So it's better to just tell how good she is at what she does by how everyone answers to her. Kind of like how I was talking about uh. Slowick in the menu. <laughs> and you're going to spend the night. Also, girl, when you get married. And I'm gonna pester you like you're my own daughter. Mind your own business, old man. I don't think you understand how our relationship is and how complicated things are. Okay. <laughs> okay, so what's coming up is the inciting incident for the entire movie. Meeting Jen. These are the two main characters of the movie. I don't care what anyone says. Watch what's about to happen here. Look at the look in her eyes. 
Look, that right there, this moment right here, look at how bad she wants that shit. Okay, so I'm being really dramatic, I know, but if there is one thing about Jen, is that she will get what she wants because it's hers. It's not necessarily clear why she's here. You think maybe she's just here with her mom or maybe she knew that the green destiny would be here. Either way, she's here, she sees it, she wants it. If Shulin had talked to her benefactor for just a little bit longer, or if she said, no, I'll take the sword to my room, Jen would have never known that the sword was here. This is the inciting incident for the entire movie. Sorry, I, I didn't quite hear you. Keep this in mind. Jen is definitely a grass is greener on the other side kind of person, but Xu Lin is right. Jen does feel trapped by this marriage, but all Xu Lin sees is someone who's living a life that she wants. Mm. Yeah, she's like, you don't really get it, so I'm just gonna drop the subject. She's so conflicted. And, like, she puts so much, like, emotion into, like, the subtleties of her performance. Kind of reminds me of uh, Kira uh, Knightley in uh, Pride and Prejudice, where her performance shines so much in just, like, the little moments of hesitation and silence and contemplation. I love how the first thing he does is like, I'm gonna show it to my bestie. In other words, this sword is really fucking old. You know, someone might try to steal it, so. It's more important that you run a good city. And it's not unusual in Wuja uh, to court the martial world to bolster your position. Because if you have a powerful sect on your side, people will be less likely to mess with you. So say if you had someone powerful like Li Mu Bai on your side, if Li Mu Bai lived with and worked with Governor Yu, then he and potentially Shu Lin, who he wants to be married to him, will have a pretty cushy life overall. <laughs> Which mother? <laughs> She doesn't know what the future brings her. Jen could get rid of her at any minute. Her husband could get rid of her at any minute. So she really doesn't know what her future holds. In other words, don't get any funny ideas. And she already has all the ideas, so. I promise you that is one thing I could never do. I could never do the wooden bed. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I couldn't. I couldn't. Underrated character, in my opinion. Definitely kind of a dumb comic relief, but I really wish I knew, like, what happened to him in the future. I'm sure there is an arc with him in the uh, TV show, but I actually never watched the drama. It really isn't accessible in the United States. Like, truly, what was her plan here? Was she just gonna take it and then, like, put it under her bed? Oh, the fight scenes in this movie are so good. Now... It's known, it's pretty common knowledge these days that Michelle Yeoh isn't a martial artist, she's a dancer. But as far as I know, Zhang Ziyi is, in fact, a martial artist. And at this point, the audience can kind of figure Zhang Ziyi has some pretty distinctive eyes. We can tell that it's her at this point. And to be fair, so can everyone else that's not this guy. <laughs> Coward. Excuse me? <laughs> I'm really looking at him like, you couldn't even catch him! <laughs> Just by the way that she dodges, she can tell that she's been trained by Wudang. <laughs> and he is smart in his own way, because he does realize the truth before anyone else does. One of the most iconic scenes in martial arts cinema. And that's just the first one. It's also worth noting that both of their flying techniques are different in a sense that Xu Lian is so much more skilled than she is. Like, Jen absolutely thinks they're evenly matched. They are not. Jen really gets by on raw talent. Jen is doing all of these things where she is soaring so high and trying to make all these giant leaps and bounds, but all Xu Lin has to do is keep going to catch her. This is so cool. Oh, it's one of my favorite scenes. 
And this is probably the first time Jen's really struggled as far as her martial arts goes. Shulin is confused. She's like, okay, any self-respecting thief would have given up by now. It's like, why do you keep trying? And see, in some ways they are evenly matched, but honestly, Shulian still trumps her as far as skill goes, even when she hurts her. Get back! It's one of my favorite shots. She could have absolutely taken off her mask right then, but that's not Jade Fox, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, Jen's really... The only reason Jen won that was because of the last minute save. Okay, but the sword is still there. That You understand how bad it would be if it finds out that he stole the sword of a legendary warrior? It's gonna be like, maximum terrible. I do like that touch, because that didn't look like it happened on purpose. <laughs> she's like, I wonder. I don't think she knows, but she's just like, mm, whatever. And Chu Lin's already figured it out. But once again, this guy's an underrated character. He's at least trying to do his fucking job. He is roughing people up while he does it. Yeah, so they're not street performers. <laughs> they, they are definitely not street performers. Otherwise, they would not have such dangerous looking weapons. They are definitely part of the Jiang Hu. Those chakrams are so cool. So this is establishing that Jen can read and write and can do it very, very well. Very neat penmanship. And see, the governess is trying to nip this in the bud. Like, no, you don't need to see her. Jen keeps pushing her luck. And she can't really disobey Jen because if she does, she's found out. And she's almost impressed by the amount of luxury this girl has been born into. She is just watching because she already knows. And she confirms it here with uh, how good she is at calligraphy. Because, you know, the old adage that swordsmanship is tantamount to calligraphy. You see it in a ton of movies. It's almost like she has a sword on her mind. Girl, I know you lie. So she's also bored, you know, idle hands make the devil's work and everything. Yes, but I'm bored and I don't like that man. Also, I love someone else. And Jen is very much in love with someone she can't have, but it also shows that she's very naive and lacks perspective. So that is an important line. The thing about tradition is that it is harder and harder to subvert the older it is. The more deeply it is ingrained into society, a lot of people will even start saying that you're inherently evil for doing it. Julian does have a lot of freedom that is atypical of her time period. She even runs her own business even though she had to inherit it. She's a warrior. She's very skilled at what she does people respect her not quite like jen where people see her as just try not to be a, a nuisance be useful to your father keep your mouth shut marry this guy be rich that's all you need to do because this is what i mean by indulging in selfish desire from jump shulian has had to make the difficult decision to choose not to love Limu Bai because she would be dishonoring the tradition if she did so. And dishonoring that tradition would affect her already tenuous position as leader of the security escort company. Now, where as far as Jen is concerned, who wants to make the selfish decision to return to the desert and essentially be whatever she wants to be. And her motivations will eventually change because eventually she's like, no, I don't want to go back to the desert. I want to do what I want to do. Everyone is telling me to do everything that they want me to do. I want to do what I want to do. And she kind of snaps. That is another great fight that we'll see uh, in a minute here. But this is why I find this movie to be so explicitly a feminine movie. It is a movie about women. Because if they weren't in the positions they were in in society as women, then this movie would not happen. And it would not matter. 
And here's the thing. I believe that Jen truly does want them to be equals. That's not something she's lying about. She wants to be on par with what she sees as this great hero, this person who's living the life she wants. But the thing is, the life Jen wants is not obtainable. It is a fantasy. You cannot do whatever you want with no consequences in any lifetime in any time period because other people exist. And Jen doesn't quite understand that because she was born rich. She's quite spoiled and has very little perspective. While she wants to live as equals and while that is admirable, in this situation, it's just not possible. She isn't part of the Imperial world while Xiu Lian is a part of the Jiang Hu. For lack of better word, Xiu Lian works for her. <laughs> her business, her very livelihood is subject to the decisions Jen's father made. That alone means that their relationship could never be truly equal. While I would say how she rails against her position is admirable, the deeper a tradition is ingrained in society, the more people are going to give you shit for rebelling against it. You see that in all sorts of counterculture. And it's easy to say like, oh, I can just throw off this mantle and it'll be so easy to go against the grain. It's not. People will hate you, they'll distrust you, and in some situations, they could kill you. While her point of view is admirable, it's still horribly naive to have the train of thought she has because she has no plan. And you'll see this progressively throughout the movie. Jen has no plan for anything. And Xu Lin is telling her, like, you need to get married, which isn't the best thing to say, honestly. But as far as she knows, she has always wanted kind of a, a peaceful life with her husband. I don't think Xu Lian quite realizes that, yeah, her marriage would be kind of a prison. She's remembering the desert. She loves the desert. She's so beautiful. Throughout the years, she is always so beautiful. Oh my god. And they've been watching her for a long time. But so is he. And we don't quite know who he is yet. Y'all yeah, need to be up out my house. <laughs> Then why did you just knock on my door, dude? <laughs> so he is part of the Jiang Hu. Yep. Oh yeah, because you've been so helpful. <laughs> so it's personal. I'm kind of living for them, to be honest. I love this little trio here, and I wish we had more of them. This is a very delicate matter. Julian's right. This is a very complicated situation. Are you sure you want to get involved? Girl, he came for you! And she's like, wait, what? Then why? Yeah, no, girl, he came for you! Because Lee Mu Bai is ready to move. Like, he, he's ready to, like, let's, girl, let's do this. Once again, talking about throwing off tradition. One of the reasons he wants to forsake his life is that he knows the people in Wudan would have a problem with uh, marrying Chu Lin. Oh my god, she's so cool. Wudam's fighting words. I actually genuinely love this trio, and I wish there was more of them. <laughs> Especially for this guy, because he screws up his own move. <laughs> God, I love those chakrams. They're so cool. Jade Fox. Listen, I know Jade Fox is an unrepentant murderer. She's so cool. Yeah, you can't telegraph like that, sweetie. But you know what this scene tells me? Is that Jen, as good as she is, and that Jen was trained by the best, and she's even better than her. Like, she can take on three people at once. Get out of the way! <laughs> yep. Consider your chi blocked, bitch! 
To be fair, it wasn't an ambush. <laughs> it's just like, you all right? Oh, I love the look of recognition on her face when he says 10 years. So, pause here. I know everyone loves this fight scene, but there is a chance that uh, his master assaulted her and she stole his manual and killed him in revenge. Or he dated her, promised he'd teach her, and then was like, nah, you're a woman. Why would I do that? Lee Mu Bai, as cool as he is, he is defending someone who is inherently, I don't want to use the word problematic because that's stupid, avenging someone who, while saved his life, hurt someone else whatever. I'm not gonna harp on it too much. What I am saying is, is that I understand why Jade Fox is angry. She's, I'm not saying what she's doing is right, but she is cool. And I like her very much as a villain. I think she's great. Oh, this is one of my favorite shots. She pulls out the sword and doesn't turn all the way around and tries to stab him from behind. I love it. He even tries to defend her honor. He's basically saying like, hey, this is not a disgraceful loss if you lose to me. And see, Jen comes for her because she thought she saved her uh, fight when she fought against Shu uh, Liang. That's my sword. You don't recognize me, do you? It is also worth noting, so he already knows who she is. And once again, shows that she's better than the Jade Fox. But it's also worth noting here that Chow Yun Fat, like uh, Michelle Yeoh, isn't a martial artist. I love that expression. She's worried and jealous all at the same time because she knows that Jen knows some moves that she doesn't. It's another great shot. That also means Jade Fox isn't as good as flying as Jen is. But it's worth noting that Chao Yun Fat doesn't move that much in these fight scenes because one, I believe he had a pretty severe back injury, but three, like Michelle Yeoh, he's not a martial artist, but he's not a dancer, he's a singer. This also means that Jade Fox has killed a police officer and now they've truly implicated Governor Yu and they have to report it. Yeah. And Lee Mubai is like, let's do this Jung Hu rules. Let's drag this man out by his ears. And she's like, well, that can't happen. Because if you do that, then Beijing's going to kind of go off the handle. Yeah, at this point, they're pretty sure that uh, it's Jen and that whoever taught Jen is the Jade Fox. Yeah, she's not even paying attention. And she's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that the person who stole it knows how bad this is for her family. Yeah, she's like, you you know the person who taught you is a murderer, right? Of a policeman, meaning we have to report it. Yeah, she doesn't care that she killed somebody. Cares that she killed a police officer, because that means they have to report it. And that means that they'll investigate the governor's house, because that's where the sword was last seen. And see, she's already sussed her out. Mama doesn't even notice. She catches her red-handed like that because she's also alert. And unfortunately, this is where these two characters' uh, arc ends. You don't see them anymore throughout the movie, but I kind of wish I knew what happened to them. Resigns as Belage's chief of security and decides to guard her because he feels responsible for her father's death. And I kind of want to know where they go after that. I kind of I kind of like them. I'm sorry. And see, she's trying to return the sword because she's scared. And <laughs> Lee Mubai's like, why are you doing this? <laughs> yep, there we go. Like, I don't think you realize, one, how much better I am than you, and two, just, like, how bad it's about to get. You are in a lot of trouble. And Li Mubai sees potential in her. Yeah, 
Yeah, and unlike his master, he will teach a woman. I'm not really here to fight you. And without it, she's scared. Yeah, this scene shows that she, without the green destiny, she's green. And this fight is the reason she reacts the way she does later in the movie. He is offering her a get out of jail free card right now. Girl, he already knows it's you. Like, he's willing to give her the sword if she just chills out for a minute. Yeah, I don't care if you do, essentially. <laughs> he's like, alright. So it's gonna take two weeks. I mean, she's not wrong. <laughs> she is the only reason she was sussed out. Why don't you join the five venoms? <laughs> you really do. <laughs> Yeah, a mix of love and jealousy. And so she dips before she's found out. Oh god, this is such a beautiful scene. He's so cool. I love scenes like these. Truly, I do. Where it's just like the character practicing with the sword and they're doing a bunch of cool shit. I love it. She wants, she wants, oh, she wants so bad. Yeah, we're totally talking about the sword, guys. Yeah, I was really trying not to harm her in the process. Because in her mind, this is just youthful abandon. He wants to train her. <laughs> Are you crazy? And she low key kind of does. <laughs> I'm willing to make an exception. This is a complicated situation. Oh my god. The longing! The yearning! The slowest of burns. Ten years of burns. She missed him so much. And she would be. Truthfully. Yeah, and they don't say how long ago this was. I'm assuming they got to Beijing and they immediately were like, you need to get married because you were gone for so long and no one knows what happened. So you need to get married or else if someone finds out it could be really embarrassing for us. Because at that level, that's really all they care about. I love the way thieves dress in Wuja movies. It's, oh, I love it so much. I mean, my biases are showing just a little bit. She's more interested in the excitement because that's just how Jen is. He even says, spare the women. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> Mama just pieces out. She's like, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, the fainting's kind of funny. <laughs> it shouldn't be. What the hell? Said she's determined. She gonna get what she wants. It's both her greatest asset and her worst flaw. And he really doesn't think she's gonna chase him for long. God, this scene is beautiful. I'm sorry, I say this all the time. This movie's fucking beautiful. And he's having the time of his life. 
So how dare he make fun of me? See, they had to make sure he was an honorable thief. So they say, protect the women and children, and that they only stole stuff, not people. Like she is that confident. And she is about to go all through all of these thieves to get what she wants. And he's helping her right now. She doesn't really realize it, but he is helping her. <laughs> <laughs> love it first fight yeah see the only thing he has on her is strength like at that point girl i'll just give you the damn cone like what was your plan see that's the thing she never has a plan someone's always there to save her at the last minute one of the things about jen is that she doesn't realize how incredibly kind people have been to her girl eat the food he's a falconer which also means he's a patient man bird symbolism you don't know where to go. You can't see the caravan from here. In any other movie, this would be a very bad situation. And actually, you'd be surprised at how many martial arts movies uh, use it for comedy. Yeah, that's the thing about Jen is that she never has a plan. And it's just kind of like, as long as I keep going forward, I'm gonna make it. Because as far as she knows, he's gonna try to forcibly wife her. So her aggression is entirely warranted, but a smarter person probably would have uh, prepared more. And she still has a right to be suspicious now. Because he could just be trying to ingratiate himself to her. Because why would he waste water like that in the middle of the desert? A classic trope. Listen, he's better than Jack Sparrow, okay? Dark Cloud did nothing wrong. Look me in my eyes. Look me in my eyes here. Dark Cloud did nothing wrong, okay? Xiao Hu did nothing wrong! You see, she's kind of in it now. I hate how hot this scene is. <laughs> I like that it shows her taking over as well. Her taking the lead in the uh, encounter to keep it on YouTube friendly terms. And she feels much the same. She's always been lonely, as she said so. And see, this is the definition of freedom she has. This once-in-a-lifetime love story where no one was hurt and she was treated well with respect, which doesn't always happen in a lawless place like the Jung Hu. Oh god! That's the most romantic shit I've ever heard. Yeah, keep in mind, once again, that this is Jen's definition of being able to wander freely. This highly unlikely love story. But you're putting him in danger. If they catch you, if they find you, they are going to kill him. And like, he is trying to be like, well, like, be noble and let her go. And he's willing to leave his bandit life for her. It's the trust in the heart. They loved each other so much! And then they had to go back. Now she's doubly conflicted. <laughs> he left his life for her, and now she's... She wouldn't even look at him. And by the time we get to this scene, during the whole wedding, she is hanging on by a fucking thread. And they think Jade Fox is gonna blow the scene. And then here comes Dark Cloud, messing with her plants. Oh, that's interesting, I just realized. Dark Cloud can't fly. Who? <laughs> it's like, wait, what? <laughs> Maybe? Now everyone's after you, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I, if you don't, you're fucked. So, yeah. She steals the sword again. <laughs> and by this time, he's just tired of the thievery. Like, damn. And she's like, fine. If ever, I'm not going to do what anyone wants. I'm going to do what I want. 
She's so pleased with herself. And the thing is, in the Jiang Hu, reckless disrespect gets you noticed. Yeah. That is perhaps not an appropriate reaction. Which is a lie. Yeah, I forgot. He doesn't just disappear from the plot, but he is just doing his job. In all martial arts, in all wuxia and like Xianjia, there is always a single normal person. And sometimes that normal person ends up being a whole ass villain, but that's another spoiler for another day. He loves her so much. Oh my god. Oh god. That's the goddamn truth. It's a Hades town, the great, the most dangerous wolf is the one that's howling inside your head. He's willing to break covenant for her. And their benefactor was really trying to make this happen for them. Like, truly, he was. He was telling, like, he was trying to be like, Hey, yo, Governor Yu, you get Li Mu Bai? Li Mu Bai gets his sword? He gets a comfy life? He gets to marry Shu Lin? People were really rooting for them. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this is some shit. You don't have a lot of money left, do you? And she plans to eat and run. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's get out. <laughs> People are leaving their meals. That's how serious this is. It's not like it is in the storybooks, is it, sweetie? When you make people mad, they tend to come after you. You don't have the power and the social pressure to keep people from bothering you here. He's, he's ignoring me. Do you see the shit? Yeah! She is good. Yeah, it was like, all right, all right, everybody out, everybody out. <laughs> we ain't trying to be in this. <laughs> oh, I love steel fans. <laughs> okay, what, what, did I, what did I say? This is such a great scene. Oh, God. That she's good, but she's impetuous. But she's about to have the same problem Dark Cloud did. After this, everybody's gonna be able to recognize her and everybody's gonna wanna fight her. Yes! I love it! Oh, in her mind, I'm sure she definitely is. She's living her YN dreams, baby. But <laughs> that's not true at all. I love it. Disappears and leaves no trace. This whole thing is a trace, baby. Yeah, no one's listening, sweetheart. <laughs> You'd better go. <laughs> we were so polite, we weren't coercive at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love how they're like, oh, her husband, oh, all right. <laughs> that explains it. They were going to spend the night at the escort agency and they were going to get married and everything was going to be good and happy. They were going to get their happy ending. They were very close to it. And there's the storm coming in. It's an interesting hint of show, don't tell, you know? You can tell how good she is at what she does by the fact that everyone loves her and they all defer to her and they call her by her title and she cares about them. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> and at this point, I think Xu Lian was really, was truly ready. She still felt a little bit, bit guilty, but I do believe she was ready to start a life with Li Mu Bai at this point. And I believe that is her apologizing. You're in a lot of trouble. It is hard. You were right. And she's like, yeah, yeah. If you had listened to me, this would have happened. Think of your lover's feelings, my god! 
再看着吧。You know about him, girl? Yes, I do. Everybody knows. 没有商人不成的事。It's not about him, though. 他在哪里？李慕白已经安排了。李慕白。Yeah, he cares that much about the situation. 你们都是一起的。给我下套，我走。叫了你给我闭嘴！你凭什么骂人？我一路替你隐瞒，护着你和你的家人。I have saved you in every single way. I have been incredibly kind to you. Everyone has. And she's like, you didn't hear a word I said. Put the sword down, or I'm gonna make you do it. And then she has the nerve to attack her employees. I'm gonna beat this girl's ass. The only problem is this time Jen has the green destiny. She knows she's not good up against the straight sword. She said it in the beginning of the movie. And Jen knows she's outclassed. That's why she relies on the same trick over and over and over. Watch. Get her ass. Yep. See, there we go. One trick pony. And she's like, okay. Really, skill versus pay to win. She keeps knocking her off balance, and she keeps sparing her. She has yet to aim low. Yeah, not quite. You get something she can't cut in half so quickly. And I want to drive home here. Jen is scared. And she's trying very hard to act like she's not, but she's doing the same moves over and over. She only knows one way to end a fight, and that is destroying the weapon. So she does eventually get it. And Shulin doesn't quite get it either. She's right. We've seen it. You literally have the same trick over and over. Shulin picked the weapon that she isn't good at. She said in the beginning of the movie that she's not exactly skilled with the straight sword. Even now, she is being incredibly kind to Jen when she does not deserve it. Even now, she's still trying to get the sword back. She could do it. She could right now, but she hesitates because she knows Li Mubai wants to teach her. Girl, you don't have a leg to stand on. Like I said, one of the things that's most punishable in the in Wu Jia literature is selfish indulgence. And right now, she is indulging in the selfish desire and this illusion of freedom she has. Because no matter where she goes, she's gonna be beholden to something. That's just the life you live as an adult. You can never live completely free of obligation. And no, that's not great. But you know, it is life, regardless, because other people exist in the world that aren't you. This is just a beautiful scene, honestly. And this is her just kind of losing hope and realizing the reason why you keep failing is because you're so goddamn stubborn. And I mean, tragic flaws, fatal flaws, right? And that's what makes this a tragedy: is her stubbornness, kind of like Macbeth. Like they keep telling her how this is gonna end, and she refuses to listen. Doomed heroes and all. He's like, "Are you done?" And it's not because he's not taking her seriously. This is the most serious she's ever been taken. Are you done? <laughs> You don't got the guts. And there is a part of her that wants what she's wants what he's offering. He thinks he's made a breakthrough. He's like, what the hell? That should prove to him that she's not the one that he needs to teach. But at this point, it's her crutch. It's hers, and she wants it, and she'll do anything to keep it, even if it's to her own detriment. And eventually, Jade Fox did find her. And she knows he's gonna come after her.、And、right now, she wants to get rid of two birds with one stone. She's curled up with the green destiny like it's a goddamn teddy bear. She's just manipulating her at this point. Yep. Even after all the insults she's paid her, she still goes easy on her. Gross. Girl that has all the rock and sediment and sand. Even now, feverish as she is. He's like, oh, you're dying.、And、she's still all like all of it. At the end of the day, Li Bu Bai truly believes that Jen deserves compassion. I don't know. I'd have had to beat her ass. I'm just saying. I think she's here. You in a lot of trouble. Yeah, that's how things go in the Jianghu. Jen, fights are quick. And they are often deadly. Couldn't block them all. It's starting to lose her shit a little bit, which I don't under, which I don't blame her for. 
Then do it. Then go. And now that she's seen someone who can die, <laughs> that she she realized that this. Ugh. Go, 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 go. He's burying Jade Fox. I'm not sure if I want to talk through these scenes. You're worth everything to him. Everyone was rooting for them. They had all the ingredients they needed for a happy life except for being able to break that one covenant and it, it was just too late. And the one person who's been on your side this whole time, you have ruined their life. Look at how bereft she is. And even still, she spares her. He's the only person who gets what he wanted this whole time. Live the life you took from me. You ruined her life, baby. Like, I'm just, you ruined this woman's life. She had been nothing but kind to you. Julien deserved better. And he looks at her and knows something horrible has happened. And she says goodbye to him. And he already knows what's about to happen. Dark Cloud did nothing wrong. He did not deserve that. Shu Lin did nothing wrong. Quite literally, the hidden dragon to charge through and then leave nothing but destruction behind. Oh my god! I love this movie so fucking much. <laughs> This movie breaks me in so many ways. Let's start with the most obvious. Movie is, in a sense, a villain origin story. Kind of like Macbeth. She's told at the beginning, when they realize that she's stolen the sword, Julian tells her pretty bluntly, this person, whoever stole the sword, is going to bring disgrace to their family and everyone they come across. And she did. Even the people she fought, she destroyed their weapons, destroyed their reputation, destroyed some of their faces is in a sense I wouldn't say an Elizabethan tragedy but more of a Greek tragedy where you have this hero that starts out with power and status and wealth because by all accounts even though she felt trapped she truly had a charmed life born the daughter of a rich governor a very advantageous marriage that was sure to be prosperous because for all we know her husband might have been an okay person he might have been reasonably kind. He might have been a good husband to her. We just don't know. He was an obstacle to her freedom. And her definition of freedom was from storybooks and from a very charming and beautiful love story. A once in a lifetime, one in a million chance. Because more often than not in Wuja stories, those stories trying to fall in love with the bandit, it doesn't end well. The fact of the matter is, is that she had this very broken, very naive vision vision of what freedom is and everyone told her that's not what freedom is that's not how this works except for the jade fox who hated her from jump the minute she lied to her we can be free and we can face the world together even though from jump the minute they broke out of that palace she was gonna kill her it's almost like oedipus to an extent the soothsayer tells him bro this ain't gonna end well <laughs> their stubbornness and their drive to be like no this is what i want this is how it's going to be ends up ruining their lives and the lives of people around them. Now, 
um, as far as characters go, let's start with the most obvious character being Shulian, who the story is about in a way. There is some debate over whether Shulian or Jen are the main character. I would go with Shulian being the main character and Jen being the antagonist. Or as I'm listening to myself, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe my 100th watch of this movie, I realized that maybe Jen is the protagonist. When it comes down to it, Shulian did everything right. And to an extent, she and Jen are the same because Shulian was stubborn. If she had killed Jen, she would have been conflicted, of course, and I think she would have been embarrassed and Beijing would have flipped an entire lid, but she would probably still have been able to live the life she wanted or wanted to have with Li Mu Bai. But she chose compassion. She chose restraint. Yeah, she chose to be a good leader. And that was to spare the wrongdoer, tell them to do the right thing and get back what was lost. By all accounts, she did what was right. Even after Li Mu Bai died, I don't believe she wanted to kill her at all. She still saw too much of herself in her. And then when you look at Jen, you think of a very willful teenager who thinks that being an adult is going to be great. Because being an adult means you're free to do whatever you want. And if you earn your own money, you can do whatever you want with that money. You're going to have friends. You're going to have a great job. You're going to have a car and a house just because you're an adult. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Being an adult is hard. Life is the hardest thing you will ever ever do. Because she had lived such a charmed life, because everyone she has ever known who has ever interacted with her has been terribly kind to her, she didn't realize how hard it was. Because after about two days of realizing how causing that amount of trouble can be, she has a fucking breakdown. Like, she was only in the Jung Hu for maybe two days, maybe less. They don't specify how much time, but it couldn't have been more than a week. It is a tragedy. It is unfair that that, that her night naivete and stubbornness ruined her family's lives, ruined uh, Dark Cloud's life. She ruined Li Mu Bai's life. She's the reason Li Mu Bai is dead because Li Mu Bai stuck his neck out for her. He was that determined to teach her. He saw the potential in her. She could have been something great. And I, I, I should be going somewhere with these rants. I should have written it down, honestly, and I didn't because I feel a lot of things about this movie. Let's revisit some of the statements I made at the beginning. One of the reasons I say that this is a very feminine movie is because it's about women. It's about Jay Fox and essentially how being a jilted lover has affected her all these years. A single word about living free. She just knew what Jen wanted to hear. The minute she realized Jen had lied to her, she wanted to kill her. And that's just how the Jung Hu works, which Jen had no idea. If the Jade Fox had been a man, she would have been treated more seriously as a villain. If Jade Fox had been a man, she would have learned the Wudan Manual. Then we get to Shulian, who is bound by the covenant to her former fiance and couldn't get what she really wanted because as a woman, specify exactly what that ha- what would have happened to her, but it definitely would have lost her a lot of respect. And then you have Jen, who is bound by another covenant, her fiancé. All of these women are bound to a similar covenant, and that covenant is tradition. And if they break those covenants, they lose everything. Jade Fox lost everything, snapped and killed the guy. The fact that they are so bound by these covenants dictates their every action. Unlike Li Mu Bai, who's willing to break it. Because he can. Because he's a man. Because he will be able to explain it away like, I made an exception. But as a woman, they wouldn't be able to do that. They don't explicitly spell it out. I feel like if this was any other movie, and like they bring it up occasionally, but that's one of the reasons I prefer a lot of East Asian media, because in American media these days, everyone has to spell everything out all the time, or no one fucking gets it. I think because a lot of American shows and a lot of American movies spit information out at you so quickly all the time, not everyone is able to read between the lines because you're being constantly bombarded with rapid fire information and you just have to be like uh okay a lot of what's shown in this movie is through subtext it's through silence and action they didn't have to spell it out that jen is very stubborn this will end badly for her in the future no they show how stubborn she is by the fact that she traversed an entire desert to get a comb back and then when she wanted to go back she tried to traverse the entire desert on willpower 
power alone. We don't need that spelled out for us. We just need to see it. This movie shows us that our decisions affect everyone we love. So it's up to us to make the best one. In some situations, we can't make the best decision. She couldn't just kill Jen. It's not a bad thing to indulge in selfish impulses, especially if it's for love or it's out of compassion, like with Limu Bai. But when you start to hurt the people around you, it is. However, you can be in such a position that any form of selfishness can hurt you, it can hurt your reputation, it can hurt everybody who's ever come in contact with you. So with that being said, Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon isn't asking us what covenant would you break, it's asking why. Because eventually a promise is going to be broken. You cannot keep every promise you make. Whether it be time, whether it be money, you're gonna have to let someone down at some point. Whether it be through no fault of your own, or whether it be because of a choice you consciously made. So why? Why would you break that promise? Why would you break those rules? Why would you break that tradition? Is it because of love? That is a very noble reason, but it's not always a good one. Or to save face, political power, maybe not on the so noble spectrum, but sometimes you have to, to maintain order. At some point, you are going to have to make a bad decision. Sometimes there are no good decisions. I always ask what movies and shows are asking us because everything you watch, no matter how stupid it is, should speak to you in some way. Even if it's just to calm you down, even if it's just backroom noise. When I watched this movie at the age of nine, and I really shouldn't have, but that's besides the point, I grew up beyond the hero has to win, and that sometimes the hero shouldn't always win, and that sometimes being so stubborn and never admitting that you're wrong can hurt people, and it can hurt you, and sometimes, even if you are the hero, you will lose if you continue to be stubborn. If you feel something while watching a movie or a TV show, that is not a bad thing. It's supposed to happen. You don't have to put it in the comments. Keep it in mind for yourself, okay? What did this movie tell you? What did it ask you? Although if there is one thing I do want you to take from this movie, the one thing I will tell you, being an adult is very difficult. And sometimes you can't just keep trying or keep forging ahead and just hope that everything will turn out okay. Don't let pure spite motivate you. I don't care what Tumblr says about spite being a motivator, okay? It would just be best to stop and think for a minute. Maybe take someone else's advice, look up articles, who knows? I'm going way long. <laughs> I'm going way long. I'm looking at the timestamp right now but forging mindlessly ahead is only going to hurt you. I don't want to say touch grass, but sunlight is very good for you. Sometimes it's good to listen to people. I'm not telling you that you should take everyone's advice because some people really are out of touch. Jen was the one out of touch because she lives such a charmed life. And there are some people because they're so young and naive don't realize that they've lived a very charmed life. And they don't realize that everything has worked out just fine for them because of chance. Not because they just kept trying. We just pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps. That's not how it works. A lot of luck and privilege is how it works out. Oh god, is Jenna Boomer? But yeah, I, I really enjoy this movie. I love this movie. It has had such a profound impact on me. And hey, maybe one day we'll do Fifth Element and Enter the Dragon if fair use gets its hooks out of me. Anyways, um, yeah, love this movie. A genuine 10 out of 10, rare 10 out of 10 for me, but that's mostly because of nostalgia. I'm very, very, very biased. Um, but with that being said, please like. If you like this video, please subscribe. If you really like this video and would like to see more. If you really, really like me, you can find me on Patreon, where I post full, uncut, uncensored reactions and any other commentary videos. Uh, I am taking next week off, so uh, prepare for more content after that, and we might be getting into some video game content. Who knows? And I hate just calling it content, but uh, I'm also tired of calling it a video essay. If you like, you can find me on any piece of social media, Tumblr, TikTok, or what have you. I don't advise following me on social media because I'm a lot meaner. <laughs> but with that being said, stay weird lovelies and happy eating.